everyone, this is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany. Here is my co-host, Emily Campagno and Harris Faulkner. Also joining us, Fox Business correspondent, Lauren Simonetti, and Fox & Friends co-host, Brian Kilmeade. Also host of the Brian Kilmeade Radio Show and One Nation with Brian Kilmeade. When we begin here, former President Trump is back on the campaign trail, hitting two critical battleground states, Michigan and Wisconsin. He's rallying voters and ripping what he calls Biden's border bloodbath. That's the, that's the phrase that the campaign has coined. Trump is taking on the border crisis head on as a top issue for voters. And one President Biden is struggling to control. We've seen a record number of migrants breaking the law and crossing into our country illegally. And a result of that, senseless crimes like the death of Lake and Riley at the alleged hands of an illegal immigrant. Trump's hoping his tough stance on the border will give him an edge in key swing states. What Joe Biden has done on our border is a crime against humanity and the people of this nation for which he will never be forgiven. Our border has been erased. We have no border any longer. Drugs, criminals, gang members and terrorists are pouring into our country. We're going to seal up the border. Because right now we have an invasion. We have an invasion of millions and millions of people that are coming into our country. Not one more American life should be lost to migrant crime. You know, Brian, this is going to be a cornerstone of his campaign, just like 2016, and it's resonating. It's resonating in swing states. It's resonating across the country. A couple of things. I know it's a little bit different. Give you know that Chilean hit squad of about 100 that came mm. on to some weird visa uh, they're a professional hit squad. They're wiping out mansions in Detroit. That matters. What's happening with the, with the border, that matters. When you talk about what's happening with the war in Gaza, that matters. That's why if you look at the, uh, if you look at the polls right now, he's got between a six and eight point lead in Michigan. I never thought I'd see that. In Wisconsin, it's basically yeah. a flat-footed tie. But when you look at the border, the pushback from Democrats is fascinating. They keep on leaning on the Langford Murphy legislation which didn't pass, none of which would have been implemented in time. But we judge people by their actions. You know what the actions are? I'm suing Texas not to govern their own border. I'm suing Texas to get the buoys out of the uh, Rio Grande River, and I'm not in doing anything. I have an app that allows people to land in another country and be flown into Houston or Miami predominantly on secret ways to get into our country. So don't judge people by, uh, don't judge people by what they say about legislation. Judge them by what they continue to do. Right, and that's a red herring. I mean, it's, it's, they say, look over here. The GOP didn't pass the bill. Ignore the power, 212F, I have before me to stop this that I can't take because of progressives in my party. Only you would know the numbers oh. on, on that legislation. <laughs> you know that. 212F, I got You're it memorized. That, yeah. I can recite it to you, Brian. Um, actually, no. Yeah. So, Harris, um, the polling that Brian mentioned, he mentioned eight points in Michigan. That's a CNN poll. Here's a real clear politics average, which includes mm -hmm. that. You have Trump up 3.5%. Wisconsin, to your point, Brian, Almost a dead heat, 0.8% Trump leading in both. Okay, so there are a few things that are going on uh, that make every state a border state. Fentanyl is one, sex trafficking of minors is another. So those have not stopped under Biden's watch. And I don't know what else constitutes a national emergency. Not only does he have the right and the power to flip the switch back, to turn back on Trump's policies, and he won't do that because they start with Trump's name, I would imagine. But he also has the power to declare an emergency. He does it when we get hit by hurricanes and everything else. So this is an emergency now because nothing else he's doing is working. I just interviewed a state senator, Republican McCutcheon from New Mexico. It's becoming the new epicenter. He said that he just talked to sheriffs in the last few days. They used to get fentanyl in what they call just like eight balls, maybe a few pounds. It's coming in 100 pounds at a time. And the apprehension of fentanyl in the last little while, certainly before, since the beginning of the year, but certainly since Texas has started doing some of what they're doing as well in the last few weeks, it's gone up 300 percent in terms of the fentanyl that they're apprehending. That's not to mention the humanity of illegals that they're apprehending that are ending up on their streets as well. So as that state senator told me, we used to be, you know, just kind of a, a small state. Nobody ever heard from us. Now they are on the landscape as a border state that's under pressure, under this president. So not only is he losing or almost tied in some of these swing state battles, he's doing it at a time where nothing he is doing is working. You listed it. 
But this is the number one issue for the majority of Americans, the border and immigration. When you lose on that at a time when inflation is still categorically high, where are you winning? Mm. Yeah. You know, Emily, and if we take the polling a level deeper, because we just put up the top lines from both of those states, when you ask voters, do you care about immigration? And meanwhile, Michigan, not a border state, Wisconsin, not a border state, the two states President Trump is in today. Here's what you find. Michigan, this is CNN, and you find Trump, they trust him 53% to 27% on immigration. You flip over to our Fox poll, Wisconsin, that was earlier in the year. They trust Trump 55 to 38% on the border. So what he is saying is working in an issue that is top to voters. And the point, as Harris was articulating, is that every state is a border state. So President Trump in Michigan will talk about the death of Ruby Garcia, who died at the hands of an illegal immigrant from Mexico with multiple priors. Yet again, this hideous pattern emerges as a pattern that regardless if the state touches the southern or northern border, mm -hmm. they are seeing. Let's talk about your cornerstone point, because I think it's important. So as we have the polls in our favor, as we have common sense on our side, we have the polls reflecting that Americans prioritize health and safety and the value of their dollar and livelihood, the Democrats will have you believe that everything is siloed, right? So according to them, the southern border is only about those seeking a better life and racism on the part of Republicans, right? And they say that, no, 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 crime is downplayed, right? Actually, everything is getting better. The whole point is we know everything is interrelated that Democrat policies have led to the poorest southern border, the infiltration of our cities, um, the poor decisions that have affected inflation, economics, bail reform, DA speeds, all of that, they are all interconnected. So the GOP needs to, my point is, harness that so that when they get out, the polls will be reflected in the voting. So for someone that says, well, you know, I still feel pretty safe in whatever globe they live in, then... A voter can say, well, here's why this matters. Here, here's why it affects you, because the whole point is all of these policies affect all of us as a constellation. They are not siloed, and we true. need to have a response to the abortion. Not to conflate issues, but no, I, it's a larger, it's a, it's a whole Florida constellation. Too. I'm now glad you brought that up. Now you need an answer up. in Florida. Exactly, exactly. Yes, to, to your Squatting, point, yeah. the split screen today is Xavier Becerra and Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Hakeem Jeffries in Broward County, Florida. This is on the heels of the judge saying they'll allow a, an abortion referendum to go forward. It'll be on the ballot in November that would enshrine abortion rights in the state constitution. So Democrats say this makes Florida winnable. winnable. I laugh as a Hillsborough County resident, um, because we're on the verge of flipping voter registration there to become red, and Hillsborough County is a deep red area. Mm -hmm. But I bring this up because Democrats are focusing on abortion today. Trump's mm -hmm. focusing on immigration. Overlaying all of this is the economy and inflation. Mm -hmm. Immigration is inflation and the economy. And as mm -hmm. um, the former president is in Michigan, a lot of auto workers, a lot of union support, and also going to Wisconsin, think about all of those workers. They may work at a factory or at a hotel, and they're saying, oh, there's millions of people here that eventually are going to have to work, whether legally or illegally. They're going to bring down our jobs, and we can barely get by as it is because our paychecks, because things cost so much, are being spread so thin. But I think most Americans, when I used to see, you could tell, like here in New York, you could tell a migrant was a migrant when a couple months ago, right? Basically how they looked, maybe the time of night that you would see them and their children, we, we get to work early in the morning. And I, I felt bad. I felt sorry for them. They came here for a better life. But now when we see them, when I see them, I sometimes feel angry. I'm, I'm sad for their situation. Where's the money to help you? Like, what can we do for you? I I think the border has made a lot of Americans angry. Right. Yeah. And I, I think also uh, when they bring, bring up sanctuary cities mm. as an issue, if this next, if the president's flip and it becomes Trump again, how many people really going to push back? Remember yeah. how they were sued when Trump says, let's make this, uh, let's make this illegal, and there was a pushback in courts? Is anyone going to sue for this type of a uh, certain hell that all these major cities are in right now? Yeah, you're talking about the sanctuary cities that failed to provide sanctuary. Yeah. Like, that's yes. the laughable part of it all. Come well, here. We well, welcome you all. giving can... sanctuary, but not to American citizens. Look at, right. look at the state of Illinois, particularly Chicago. Yeah. yeah. It is and, and look who will be here on Thursday. Governor Abbott, fundraiser in New York City mm -hmm. on right. Thursday. On our doorstep, the border crisis. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.